Hey guys! Hey guys, we're back again with another video. This video today is going to be in, um, inspiring people. Uh, we're going to show you and give y'all some good tips to um, help you be successful when you go off to school, either in high school or college. And also, these good study tips are, um, are really good, just help you succeed in, um, in all your classes, okay? So we're going to get started. And I'm going to read them off, and then we're going to just uh, give you our personal opinions about it, okay? So the first one that's really good is to read or skim ahead of time. A lot of times for your class, like the first or second day, your teacher is going over doing orientation about the syllabus, what to expect for your class, and um, they may give you like a, a set of uh, chapters to read to uh, get started and tell you like this is what's going to happen in a few weeks of um, school. So what I would recommend is maybe you reading those um, chapters so that you could get a head start. So when you go to class the following day, you already know what the teacher is talking about and you won't be like, oh shoot, like was I really supposed to read that stuff? Because <laughs> I have been in class and we're like, <laughs> I didn't realize we were supposed to read. Like, actually, read. I don't know. I was in summer mode still. So I'm like, oh, she's serious. Like, class is really started, you know? Okay. So the, second, um, the second one that we have is to highlight key points and key terms. Um, the reason we like to do this one is because most definitely these are always on your test. I know for me, the um, if you have your textbook, most times these key terms are the ones that are bolded. They're gonna be either italicized or bolded in black, and they'll say um, like maybe review this definition. Most times your teacher would say um, key terms um, that are always gonna be on the test and they're very important. So you may have a few key terms and key points, or you may have a lot. But either who is it's very good to know them so that when you on your test, you don't be like, oh, shoot, I should have studied that. You already know when you have to study it. And, yeah, just like in a biology class, when you read the textbook, that um, whenever the sentence is italicized, that basically lets you know that it's probably more likely 95% is going to be on the test. Next one, study with a buddy, someone who you um, who can understand the material better than you. So, for instance, math, I feel like I'm a little uh, better than um, – my sister at some things because um, math is a lot of memorization, a lot of formulas, and sometimes you need some a study buddy to help break it down, you know, into certain sections, particularly like math and biology. But like for biology, she's more stronger at biology than I was, so I would go to her or someone, you know, you know. And when you're in class, you can always ask someone. They either say yay or no to help you study or whatever. Usually, most people are friendly. They have study groups. You know, they'll meet after class or whatever. Because so, I know a lot of times. Um, like what she's saying is like sometimes you view the information the first time with your teacher and you'd be like what the heck did she just said it'll be like especially when you get to college it's like you're doing anything that's really hard for like a um elective like chemistry and, and, and biology and stuff like that even if even though I'm really strong at that college level is like 10 times uh, harder than that so if you don't know it in high school it it gets stronger and like the show enough, like you need to know it yeah. in college. And a lot of times, like when the teacher is going over, especially in a college setting, they're going it through it quick because they already expect you since you had taken it during high school that you already are familiar with their um, material. Mm -hmm. So it's always easy and helpful to know that you can go to a buddy, maybe um, exchange numbers or something like that, where you in case like the uh, night before a test, like uh, did you understand what the teacher was saying? You know give them a call, something like that, or or even study with them in school. So that way you're both on the same page. So when you take the test, you already be good and you know you're going to pass. And another thing, too, was like um, for college, basically uh, you can have a study group, you know, maybe meet once a week or every three weeks, especially at least maybe a week before the test. That way it gives you and your study group to maybe collaborate on a few chapters, go home, and then bring more material so that way you'll be prepared for the test. Use your note cards highlight. Um, for note cards, I specifically like, love note cards. They are very helpful for a biology class because they're going to give you a lot of key terms, a lot of information, a lot of history on, you know, like uh, Charles Darwin, you know, historians who've done a lot of his discoveries. And note cards is really good to memorize and to learn the material in a quick way. And also, it's really good to review the material before a test because um, I know a lot of people, they use their notes. But to me, I like something where... Um, 
I like to maybe give my sister or my friend the note card so that they can also quiz me. Because I know if, um, it's, it's one thing, it's different when you think you know the material, but it's also if they can ask you the same question or maybe read your note card in a different way, that if you can still catch catch on to it or if you may be missing a few just on the way the question is being asked. And what I like to do for the note cards, especially if it's a definition, I like to flip the note card over so that way you see the definition of the word and then you say the study of this and then you flip it over and say biology like that. It helps me to, I know for college, it'll help you to grasp the words and the meaning of the words better. Study on a daily basis so that um, the night before you will not have to cram it all in. Very important for a college level especially because you cannot cram all that information in because you're going to probably have a full load. You're either going to be full-time, part-time, pretty much is the same thing. That you're going to have a full load of classes. You won't have time to cram in biology, cram in English, cram in uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. All that vocabulary, you're going to uh, near about mix it all up together. And you think you won't, but the night before you'll be scrambling, trying to figure out this, figure out that. Call this person, call that person, and put all those notes together. And you're going to get stressed out you know, really quick. And my advice would be to study a little portion of whatever you learn um, each day in class. Study that all throughout the course before you take the test so that you already know um, what you've been studying. So the night before, all you just have to do is review um, the material, skim over it a little bit, and then you should be good to go. Um, this one is if you're in sports or any recreational activities, my advice would to be for y'all is to always set aside at least 30 minutes um, of school time on your own. That way, because I know most times, like when we was in sports, me and her, me and my sister, we did track, we did cross country, a little bit of basketball. Um, you know, most schools, it's like from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then it, our practice time was like right after. It was yeah. like 3, 3. It was like from like 2 to like four. 5, 2 or 4 or 5 o'clock. So pretty much you're 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 day, you're staying at school in about all day. Mm -hmm. Your life is school all day for high school. So when you get home, you have what maybe three or four hours, depending on what time you go to bed, to actually study and review the material. Mm -hmm. And and most times you don't even have that because you're wore out from practice. Mm -hmm. You've been at school all day. Or and, track most, me, or, you know, and most times when you you are studying. You don't be you don't forgot what you learned in school because you're so tired. So you really might cut that short. So always study. Um, set aside like thirty minutes, even if it's in school. I know um, when we was in high school, they had what they call like, power lunches, where they had like mandatory thirty minutes up to an hour to study. You go to your um class, maybe you, if you were struggling in the class, just to sit there ask the teacher questions. So always set aside that time so that you can be very prepared for class. The next one is um, if you struggle in especially like English class, maybe have somebody, um, a buddy or a pal to review your essays or papers so that when you turn it into a t-shirt, they should be pretty um, perfect. Like go over grammar. I know I struggle with grammar, especially when writing papers. It's easy for me to just spit out uh, five paragraphs like it's nothing. But as far as grammar, I really don't check that until the end. But I know my sister's really good at grammar, so maybe she can look over it. Have somebody that can look over it maybe give you a different interpretation so when you give it to the teacher, the teacher will be like, oh, okay, she knows what she's talking about. It won't be marking over your paper with red, you know, that red pen that you need to do. Like, mm, this is wrong, this is wrong. Like, okay. go back over it. Because it's really aggravating when you're in school and you have to uh, do review and brainstorm and all that, get your ideas set up. And then when you have your paper, like your teacher is eating away your paper, like you didn't put any time or effort into it. So just make sure you have somebody review it, take your time, and just put in some good work for it. Yeah. And also, it's good to help review from someone else because they may pick up on something that you did not see or whatever, or the teacher may not did not see. And plus, um, each teacher requires different things, so it's good to have uh, two or three people look it over because you may miss something and you, you know, just to compare. Yeah, and to add to what she's saying about if you maybe have missed something, also, when you know you get into high school, college level, they no longer, like, accept well, some teachers, depending on which teacher you have, they no longer really accept that MLA, 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 MLA format. They really like Sound that like APA, APA and that's know. like a different little language if you don't know how to do it. Yeah. They, do, they do have sites where you can go, but sometimes the teacher don't even accept that. They want you to do it like by hand mm -hmm. or find the author, the title, Citation. the book. Yeah, so it's really to get somebody who really knows 
the English and how to do the citations, the grammar, and all that. So when you turn your paper in, it'll be an A every time. Okay, another one which I also struggle with in school, if you're kind of a shy person, maybe don't like to talk or raise your hand, ask the teacher uh, questions in class, maybe wait 10 minutes after, um, I mean, excuse me, go 10 minutes early before class and ask your questions or wait to uh, to class is actually over to ask your questions because sometimes I know you get in class and you may be with your friends and you may be kind of shy and don't want to like, not mess up, but you know, say something wrong or kind of what you feel maybe was stupid to say. Um, so I will always say, ask your questions after or class or whatever to get a different viewpoint of what the teacher is asking or trying to tell you across in class so that you actually understand maybe if you was kind of confusing what she was saying that you're both be on the same page. Yeah, because especially like in high school, you may be, you know, be able to, you know, you may not have to ask teachers so much, but in college, you won't have time to, oh, did they, the teacher say that, or did this be on the um, the uh, the school, the college's website, or this be up there, you know, sources and stuff like that. Especially for writing papers, you're gonna need to, you might as well just go ahead and ask, you know, for clear for yeah. clarification. Yeah. <clears throat> One I also dealt with in high school was if you're going to be enrolled into an honors class or AP class, be prepared to do uh, more work than were if you were to be in a regular setting class. The only difference I felt like from being an honors class and in a regular setting class is that you do, you go over the same material, but you may go over um, a higher level of it and you go at a faster pace. I remember my freshman year of high school, I wasn't even supposed to be in honors. Um, what is it, history class, but they, my teacher said I did so good from middle school, so they enrolled me, and child, it was a lot of work. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get out of that class, but I wound up doing good and got an A in it, and in my fact, I wound up, uh, after that, getting uh, all my social studies um, for each 11th grade, 12th grade, and 10th grade, I wound up getting honors for it, but it really is a lot of work. They go at a faster pace. The teacher expect you to already know, you know, uh, what to go over in the material and be ready to take notes and what to highlight and stuff like that. They really teach you kind of like you're an adult at that time to, you know, they're not going to be babyfying like, okay, Megan, turn in your work in. They're going to expect you already to know that. Yeah, and when you say that AP honors class is kind of like college, yeah. fast track. AP right? is like a college level class in a sense. They go really fast. You're learning um, literature that may be not um, considered in like regular setting, such as like, um, like African American literature, like you learn, you read literature that maybe um, everybody else is not, not reading, but the teacher expects that you know you're in that class that you should be able to read it at a higher level. And if like for college, if you're good in a the subject, then I, I would encourage you to do you maybe you maybe try a fast track. If you did honors class in high school, then you should be okay. But if you weren't, you know, as confident or um, successful, like in specifically ma like math. I would encourage you just to stick to like a regular 16 week um, course. If you, when you go into a college and you know in your syllabus where it says hybrid, that basically means you're going to be doing work maybe inside class or that class is on and online. On online specifically. Mm -hmm. So you could be, even though you may have a seated class, uh, a lot of times teachers will give you work in classroom and online or hybrid meaning just online so always be checking your email every day because a lot of times teachers will email you through that and that you are staying um going onto your site whatever site it's called whether it's like moodle or blackboard make sure you're checking your um information because a lot of times um whether you may know it or not is that we learned that your teacher can go on at any time to see how much activity have you have been doing on the website, your college level, your, the class. So if you said to the teacher, oh, I'm struggling in your class and um, I, I know I've been doing the work, they can actually go on to your um, class and see how many times you logged on, how many times you, uh, log you logged off, uh, how long you were logged on. So if you say, if you said you only, um, you did the work and you was only on the thing for five minutes, it will tell the teachers how long you were on. So to always make sure that you're, you know, doing activity um, that you're supposed to do. And with a hybrid class, they'll usually put the homework online, so they're going to know if you did it or yeah. not, or you did it halfway or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And a hybrid class, they usually put notes online, study guides, you know, just um, have an open uh, communication, so mm -hmm. that way 
you're aware of what's on, going to be online, what's going to be in class. And another thing I would like to add, just by thinking that something came to my mind, is when you do an assignment, after you have submitted to the teacher, always keep a copy with you on your computer, say, even if it's on a flash drive, because I know a lot of times uh, the teachers have other classes. They may have seven or six other classes. Let's like, say if you take a psychology, they may have six mm -hmm. psychology classes. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, let's say they say they didn't get your work. Well, if you don't have it saved on your computer on a flash drive, then you don't have, um, a sense like your word, your teacher can't really count on your word because they can say, well, everybody turning their work except you. It kind of looks strange, like, hmm, if you don't have, you know, saved on your computer, like, it kind of makes it look like you didn't do it. So always save a copy on your computer or flash drive so to cover your stuff. So if the teacher say, well, I didn't get your assignment, you can say, well, I turned it in and it looked like this. I already have a copy. When I turn it in, keep the emails as well. Yeah, and they may have uh, report, um, graded it. They just didn't record the grade yeah. because they have so many students. Like for a psychology class, there's about 30 to 60 students in one cohort, yeah. one class. And then they have about six or seven classes. So that's about a 1,000 or something yeah. students. That's a lot to remember and record. So they may have just forgot, yeah. you know. So always, yeah, always keep your work saved and, and keep your emails so that there won't be no confusion on either side, your side or the teacher's. Mm -hmm. Make sure to email your teacher if you're uh, absent from class. When you go to college, uh, they expect you as a college student to be responsible for yourself. At that time, they don't care if you're 16 years old in college or 50-something uh, years old. They expect you to be a responsible adult and that at that level, they shouldn't be, you know, babying you. So always keep your work. Yeah, and in college, they usually have a, most teachers have like a schedule or you pretty much know what's going to be the next week. So you can pretty much prepare yourself already, but it just helps to email them to let them know if like, especially if it's a seated, a seated class. But if it's online, then you may not have to worry so much because everything's already up there. So you can kind of get a head start before a seated class, especially remember to email your teacher if you're going to be absent and not yeah. be in that class. That just to cover yourself. So at the end of the semester, they won't be like trying to fail you, be like, no, I did my work. Yeah. Here's the proof. If having to enroll in a tutoring, um, try not to miss uh, many sessions. Okay, so with the tutoring sessions, I know they have provided uh, either in high school or college, and just in case you go, just let you know, it's nothing wrong if you have to go to tutoring. Even if you're an A student and you go to tutoring just to just go to make sure you you know you know your stuff and that you're keeping good with the schedule, you know, there's nothing wrong. Just want to let y'all know with that. Another thing with tutoring in high school, even if you don't need it, um, I know they're supposed to offer it that to the teachers, just let you know. Try not to miss that if you do have to go, because I know a lot of times what the teachers don't tell students is, um, let's say you are passing your grade and it's the first semester and you're doing good, but towards the end of the semester, you're starting to fail. Well, a lot of times the teachers are not really, really willingly to help the student if they have been missing their tutoring um, sessions because they feel like, well, they've been offered the help, but they have been denied to come in. So it, it really looks bad on the student to say, well, I'm, I'm failing. It, make, it makes it look like, well, you're failing yourself because you're getting help, but you're not going to receive the help. Mm -hmm. Like the power lunch. Or the, yeah. The, you're not going to that specific class to ask the teacher questions or get help on what you may have missed or whatever. And you're going to the, I forgot the other ones, like yeah. the... Um, like sometimes lunch. they allow you to go to like the PE to like shoot groups or something like that. But if you're, you know, maybe on the borderline, you might want to go. Yeah. This just helps so both sides are covered. Mm -hmm. So if you need help from the teacher, they can say, well, at least Megan, she did go to her tutoring session. So let me help her um, see what I can see, see what I can do to help her to make sure that she passes her um, class. So I see that she signed in yeah. all these days. So she did, you know. Yeah, she's going to be, and if you're in high school and this is going to be your senior year, um, our advice to you would be to take extra classes and to get ahead or start on college classes. For instance, when I was in um, high school, I was able to graduate early, but I didn't graduate early because I wanted to take extra classes that way. Now, when I get to college, that would be less that I have to pay for, for my, you know, me and my parents. And that's less you have to spend on fin financial aid. Um, the extra classes I took was a chemistry and like English and I think I took a math and I'm glad I did because again those were less classes I had to pay for less classes I had to take and when you get to college you, you don't want to pay for anything else that you don't have to necessarily pay for if you could have took it in high school because 
far as the college are concerned with, if you took it in high school, high school, excuse me, most times they would take that credit and count it for um, a college credit, which is really good because that's less you have to take and early where you can graduate. Um, also, these help when you have to do the major, anything like nursing, engineering. They really like to see that, wow, she took chemistry in um, high school, so that makes you look like a good candidate to, if you were to want to become a part of a major, like nursing, anything like that. They'll be like, they'll be like wow, she got a head start mm -hmm. on her, you know, what she's trying to pursue yeah. her career. And I do know a lot of times what people fail to um, tell the students is, um, that for instance, if I wouldn't have taken chemistry in high school, it's, you know, it's still at a college level, it's going to be even harder because they expect that since it was offered in high school that you should have took it in high school, you know, and it's, it's just a whole lot different than what you really realize until you have to be put in that situation. And then also, yeah, just it's good to prepare yourself for in high school. That way, in college, you won't be so shocked and so like, overwhelmed because, you know, sometimes you, you may couldn't because you may be in a sport that you couldn't take extra courses. But if you can, you might as well go ahead and just take the opportunity because once it's gone, the opportunity is gone, it's gone, and, you know, you can't really get it back. And... And most times, your high schools nowadays, they will pay for the college credit. So it's kind of like, well, why wouldn't you take that opportunity when it's when they're going to be paying it anyway for free? You know, that's like a great opportunity. Um, another one, if you're going to be a junior in high school, we will recommend for y'all to, you know, start saving your money. So when you become a senior, you already have enough plan um, of money set aside for that. Because senior stuff can be very expensive. And we're going to... um. I'm going to give you some examples of stuff that you have to pay for that sometimes people don't tell you or you may don't realize it until it just hits you and you're like, wow, I'm a senior this year. So, for instance, stuff that we had to pay for when we became a senior is like your senior portraits. Uh, these have to be taken usually in order to be in the yearbook at the beginning of school. And um, in order to be in the yearbook, you have to, you know, pay for them, believe it or not. They don't just let you take the picture and without paying for them. And it's crazy. And you even have to pay for them, and even even if you take take them at the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 it's so crazy. They make you pay a down payment. Yes, right then. Um, right then. Mm -hmm. So if you so don't even the picture, their, um, <laughs> like for girls, you'll use the little black thing. Yeah, the little sash. Thing. And the pearls, you have to, you paying mm -hmm. your down payment just to even put that over across your neck. Even if you don't even um buy the pictures for yourself. Mm -hmm. The next one is your yearbook. Uh, I know our yearbook was expensive. It was like. Uh, at least $125, if not more. Mm -hmm. And if you're like the type where our parents put our pictures, like had a little ad in the, in the back of the picture where you can have your own little space in the back, that costs um, another like $200. And we mm -hmm. both got one each year when we had graduated. It's nice. We yeah, it's it nice, costs, but it's know. very expensive. Um, another thing that comes up that a lot of people go to is prom, especially for the ladies. Um, you know, you got to pay for your dress, get your nails done, your shoes, your hair. Yeah, um Prom tickets can be very expensive. I know when I went, um, the year we I went with my sister, because we're like one year apart, um, tickets were $75 each. So you think about it, $75 for me, $75 for her. If you have dates, another $75, $75. That's mm -hmm. not even including if you're eating, mm -hmm. uh, the limo, any fancy stuff you do extra. So that's even out of its, um, you know, craziness too. And if you take pictures that night, you have to pay for that. That's craziness. Um, senior class picture, you have to pay for that, um, separate, that doesn't even come in the senior, um, bundle, of uh, that they tell you to pay for it along with your senior pictures. Uh, parking pass, if you drive to school, I know I did, that was $75 for just one year, and, um, I drove, like, two years, so you think about 75 for one year, 75 another, I mean, it's just, like, 75 hundreds and up, been spending. Another one is senior gear, uh, Usually the senior gear it comes with your um where it says everything is like twin uh whatever you graduate so if you graduate in twenty eighteen it'll say twenty eighteen yeah. your jacket maybe your sweats um I used to think that when my parents paid for that that was all together but you have to pay for that separate the jacket the pants the sh whatever else you get is that's separate usually um, when you gotta go pay for your um class um the picture when you're in your cap and gown then you'll also pay for the shirt and then sweats and then you get extra your little bag you know all that stuff costs mm -hmm. okay another thing that um people forget to pay for because it happens at the end of the year is your cap and gown 
of those have to be separate, you know, paying for it. And if you want to buy your, like, an outfit to go underneath it, depending if you're wearing a dress or, like, a shirt and a nice um, pants or whatever, you know, those things cost. And shoes. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're in any clubs, like host a club, that's like a health occupation club, a Spanish club, they got the chess club. I mean, they got so many clubs, it's ridiculous. Unfortunately, what they don't tell you is, like, you have to pay for those, too. You got to pay dues. You yeah. got to pay for your dues and... Like, when you're in those clubs, if you're getting cores also, those dues help pay for your cores. So, I know we got um, honors cores mm -hmm. and, like, technical honor society cores, stuff like that. So, we those were paid for, too. So, um, everything you saw on that um, for the senior thing was paid for and had to be paid um, in full or either, like, monthly payment. Mm -hmm. They had and, it. and also, if you want oh, to decorate also, your cat, mm -hmm. you have to pay for that and, out of your own pocket, And too. I forgot to tell you, uh, you know, um, if you wanted to pay for uh, your senior ring. I didn't get one yeah. my year because <laughs> it was ugly. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I didn't like it. My mm -hmm. sister got one, and she, you you barely wear it, though. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it can run, it can cost you from, like, $250, depending on which ring you like, up to 1000 I really don't see that necessary. Mm -hmm. Just do all the other stuff. Yeah, don't especially like if you like, you don't really like your high school like that. No, then our parents end up giving us a something else, you know, special. Yeah. So it was like I really shouldn't have bought yeah. that. Yeah. Like if you're not gonna wear it every day, it's kind of like a waste. Like, cause I didn't want mine. I'm keeping it real. I didn't want that. I was like, when I leave and graduate here, y'all ain't gotta worry about me no more. I'm not coming back. <laughs> like you better look at me now. Look at me twice. Cause that's it. And also, um, what is really expensive is that senior trip. I know um, my senior trip was like $500, and I forgot where we were going to go. But anyway, it was just too much, and we weren't going to stay down there too long, like maybe so, a day or two. And that's ridiculous. And my senior trip, I didn't go on, but it was like 800 or something, I believe. It's and, expensive. And how about, and then when they got down there, they basically, like, one of the buses, like, broke down, so everybody come back to the school the next day telling, you know, what happened. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm glad I did not go. It's, don't say, you paid, she would pay $800 to get in a broken down bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hot and sweaty and everybody, you know. With our senior trip, it was so expensive that, um, that we didn't, we couldn't go to it because we didn't have enough participation. And I told, <laughs> I told my friends, I said, I'm not going to have my parents pay that mess. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for what? Mm -hmm. Like $500 plus dollars to go nowhere? Like, I forgot where we were going, and but it wasn't to, far. In mine, they went to one amusement park, like, mm -hmm. real nice one. But for one day, you know, that's like, you know, you don't spend You can that do that money. on your own. Yeah, you can go a whole week yeah. for like, two more hundred more dollars. Yeah, yeah, so that was nothing. But, yeah. That's all that we have so far mm -hmm. to tell you guys. I hope this information helps somebody. Um, we just want to say good luck in your um, success for either college or starting high school. We know it's going to be a different, uh, big and different transition, but we know y'all are can do it. You're capable of doing this. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or whatever, just let us know. We're going to be wishing y'all good luck. And, um, and post your comments down below oh, yeah. for what other future videos you want us to do. You know, we like your input. Yeah. Really do. And also, I forgot to tell y'all, um, if you were following us for our giveaway, we just want to let you know that the two winners have been selected, that we have contacted them. And so, all to just check your emails, um, because we have, um, forwarded them that information. So, if you are a winner, just let, um, just check your email to see if you're a winner, okay? Mm -hmm. Until next time. Bye. bye.